Hello, this is Paolo Ferro who's speaking and I'm very happy to present you this work titled Influence of Aluminium Casting Alloy Chemical Composition on the interaction with uh, a 304 low carbon stainless steel insert by Ferro, Fabrizi, Bonollo and Berto. This is a summary, number one introduction and motivation number two materials and methods number three results and discussion and finally as always the conclusions today we are living in the area of uh, advanced materials with the aim at reducing gas emissions reducing weight of mechanical components is mandatory Thinking about the automotive and transport industry, lighter and lighter vehicles could be built by replacing steels with aluminum alloys. However, a breakthrough can be possible only combining different materials to each other, therefore designing multi-material components. Of course, the easiest way to produce bimetallic components is pouring the melted aluminum alloy into a mold container containing the steel reinforcement. It sounds good if only it were so simple. In fact, some issues need to be faced, such as the incompatibility between the two metals in terms of uh, thermal expansion or intermetallic phases production at the interface that can weaken the metallurgical bonding. The present study was aimed at investigating the influence of aluminum casting alloy composition on the metallurgical and mechanical properties of stainless steel wire mesh reinforced aluminum matrix composite samples obtained by gravity casting. Two common casting alloys are taken into account. Aluminium silicon 7 magnesium and aluminium silicon 9 copper. The effect of a solution heat treatment on the metallurgical bonding at the interface between the matrix and the insert was finally investigated. The composition of the two analyzed alloys are summarized in this table. The major difference lays on the silicon and copper contents that influence the alloy fluidity and mechanical property respectively. Moreover, the difference in iron content could influence the intermetallic composition at the interface between the matrix and the insert. The specimens were obtained by gravity casting as shown in this video. Of course, the wire mesh has been degreased using ultrasonic cleaning in acetone and then placed inside the mold cavity before pouring. Moreover, the mold was preheated at 350 Celsius degree. All aluminum alloys were poured at 730 Celsius degree. Some of them underwent a heat treatment at 550 Celsius degree for 10 hours. Radiography testing were carried out to investigate the presence of porosity and finally optical and scanning electron microscope analysis were carried out on samples in both S-cast and solution heat treated condition in order to investigate the metallurgical transformation occurring at the interface between the two materials. At the end, mechanical properties were investigated through tensile tests. A great amount of lack of filling defects at the steel wires intersections were detected but with a greater percentage in the first aluminium alloy with a lower amount of silicon. 
that is attributed to its reduced fluidity compared to the second one. As I said before, silicon contributes to increase the fluidity of the alloy. The result was also confirmed by samples prepared for metallurgical investigation in which it was possible to estimate the percentage of lack of filling defects by imaging analysis. We focused on the metallurgical bonding at the interface. In both the aluminium alloys, in the as casting conditions, the contact with the steel wire mesh is not well defined. See the figure on the left. In the case of aluminium silicon seven magnesium alloy, some debonding surfaces seem to appear and the steel wire is completely decorated by the eutetic structure. On the other hand, silicon particles seem to nucleate on the steel surface when considering the other kind of alloy. After the heat treatment, the insert aluminium matrix interface was partially decorated with an intermetallic structure where a metallurgical bonding, of course, was uh, previously achieved. The chemical composition of the intermetallic phase changes according to the aluminium matrix composition. With the help of literature, the two intermetallic compounds highlight by the contrast in the figure on the right side were supposed to be uh, beta intermetallic phases, darker gray, and uh, or a tau intermetallic phase, uh, lighter gray. On the other hand, when considering the aluminium silicon 9 copper alloy, the intermetallic composition seems not to change, moving from the interface to the aluminium matrix. In this case, however, different cracks were observed in the intermetallic layer that could indicate a more brittle behavior compared to that format with the aluminium silicon 7 magnesium alloy. It is also observed how the eutectic silicon modified its morphology after the heat treatment from plate-like to almost equiacid shape. These two figures summarize the tensile test results. Referring to the aluminium silicon 7 magnesium matrix on the left side, it is observed how the steel wire mesh reduced the mechanical properties of the samples in terms of both ultimate tensile strength and elongation at rupture. This is attributed to the great number of lack of filling zones that promoted a premature debonding between the matrix and the reinforcement and a reduction of the cross-section area compared to the specimens without the insert. The improvements obtained with the heat treatment with and without the steel insert are attributed to the silicon morphology modification. Considering the second matrix, see figure on the right side, the steel wire mesh reduced the mechanical property of uh, the S-cast specimen, but slightly improved those of the heat-treated compound castings when compared to the heat-treated alloy without the insert. It is supposed that this behavior is due to the reduced number of lack of filling zones compared to that found in the previous aluminium matrix and a consequent metallurgical bonding improvement promoted by the heat treatment. It is quite interesting to observe that the steel wire mesh didn't fail at the end of each test. Rather, a brittle detachment 
occurred between the insert and the matrix as observed in this fractography showing fragments of intermetallics in the, the steel wire. So, in conclusion, the alloy with the higher silica content allows to obtain samples with a lower number of lack of filling defects considered the main reason of the reduced mechanical properties of the obtained compound castings. In combination with the improved matrix ductility induced by the heat treatment, it was possible to retard the steel wire mesh brittle detachment and to obtain a little improvement of the mechanical properties compared to those of the matrix alone. Moreover, the following improvements are suggested for future research in this field. Number one, process parameters such as pouring and mold temperatures should be optimized in order to eliminate voids due to lack of fusions. Number two, heat treatment parameters should be optimized with the aim at avoiding brittle uh, fractures in the, in the intermetallic layer and obtaining the best combination aluminum matrix ductility reduce intermetallic layer thickness. Number three, steel surface preconditioning could improve the metallurgical bonding as suggested also by literature. And finally, number four, insert geometry need to be improved working on roughness and the shape of the mesh. Difficult to fill zones, stiffness of the insert that should be very close to that of the matrix. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. These are my contacts and I hope to see you soon at the conference. Thank you for your kind attention. Bye bye.